dream was like a house on acreage, right? With kids, yeah. seven kids. Yeah. It's like you want them to be able to run around. Yeah. And so we ended up finding something um, off 299 out there past Shasta College, you know, and it was just this house with a pool on acreage and it had this kind of like neglected in-law unit. Mm. And so that was kind of like the the sign, you know, that was wow. it. It was like, that's how we can make this work because yeah. we had done it ourselves and they knew about it. That was kind of what we were looking for was something with the yeah. guest house. Yeah. Because once you get up into looking at, you know, the range of houses on acreage, mm -hmm. your price skyrockets. Oh, big time. Yeah. And you're just yeah. paying for land. Like the houses yeah. are actually usually a lot worse. Yeah. Like, you know, we go out into areas like, you know, Palisadro and all these other places. Yeah. And like you're paying for the area. Right. You're paying to have like an acre to five acres, right. maybe 10 There's if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge premium, yeah. right? Yeah. And it also means that you're going to have to do a lot of work to the house. So yeah. this thing was in major disrepair, super neglected. And they took this thing on, you know. Wow. And really made it affordable because of being able and to the have. House, and, and yeah, and the home. So so it had the in law. It had like this in law unit that yep. they were able to remodel, and then yep. they got the rent for that in law unit to help right. cover the payment difference. Correct. For Correct. so that they could afford the home. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's, that's like the essence awesome. of house hacking. I mean, I think that's the ideal scenario. Um, you know, I have some other clients that I help buy in, in uh, the Garden Track. Mm. And they were actually tenants at our house that were living in our studio and they wanted to buy. I was able to help them wow. with their purchase. Yeah. And um, basically what we found a house, because I was like, guys, I was like, wait, you know, now when you're, I'm starting to advise clients that are yeah. young, I'm yeah. like, man, if I could go back, like, I love our story, right? I yeah, love the houses that we story, bought. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so much favor, incredible moments. Yeah. But I also look at it like, man, if I could go back and have the first one be like a duplex mm. or a triplex or a fourplex, mm -hmm. yeah. like that all day, right? Yeah. Because all of the payments from the other units are subsidizing your mortgage or helping you to cash flow or helping right. you to build your savings or yeah. build your portfolio. Like, yeah. having a scenario like that at the start, yeah. that's ideal. And like... Didn't Fannie Mae just come out with something the last year? Yeah. yeah, so you can actually buy a fourplex or a triplex. Before, this was what the rule was. Yeah. A year ago, you had to put at least, if you were going to be live in one of the units and rent out the other three, you had to put 20% down on a fourplex. If you, didn't so buy, if you didn't live in the unit, you had to put 25% down. Right. So FHA, though, says you can buy 3.5%, but that's almost impossible. And the reason why is because... The other three units at 75% of the rent with, sorry, the four units at market rent at 75% of the rent has to be equal to or more than the mortgage payment. And how can you do that when you're putting three and a half percent? Correct. Right? No, it's, like yeah, it's very hard. It's just, yes. Yeah. It's very hard to do. So yeah. a lot of people couldn't do the FHA product. So Fannie Mae came out and said, hey, we're going to allow, because they obviously know we have a housing shortage. They know that we have a um, affordability challenge. And so they said, hey, you can buy a fourplex and only have to put 5% down and not have to have it qualify for the income, have not have to have the income to qualify like FHA. So right. you put, literally right. put 5% down on a fourplex. So I actually did the math on one of them okay. in Reading that I saw for sales is $600,000 fourplex. Each unit was two bedroom, one bath units. Wow. And you could rent, I looked it up, you could rent each unit for like thirteen or $1,400 a month. For a two-bedroom wow. unit, so like three it's, units. It's like four grand, or whatever it is. Yeah. So, so if you live in one, yeah, you, the payment was forty-three hundred bucks with five percent down. Oh my god. Forty-three hundred, and then and then all day. Yeah, and all then day. the other three units you rent for thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what is you know, let's say fourteen hundred bucks, it's um, twenty, uh, um, twenty-eight hundred plus another fourteen, thirty-eight. Uh, 40 or 42 yeah something like that anyways came out to be where the the one unit was actually less than it was like a thousand eleven hundred dollars that you would pay for your house for your housing and for this is like for a family like maybe they they just are getting started or right. and they have the ability to put the five percent down and right. by the way that five percent you can do as a gift oh for a fourplex and you can do this a threeplex <laughs> you know so crazy too um so yeah, that that would be an extreme yeah. awesome way for for house hack. And I keep mean, in mind, yeah. like, and I always remind clients when I'm talking about this is like, rent goes up too, right? 
And so right. if, you, if you if you factor that into your numbers, rent, you know, yeah. you might not be cash flowing a lot, maybe a little bit. Rent goes up to, right. let's say, 5% a year. And so you just have and to manage it five well, to, yes, right? exactly. So manage people the property. People get stuck, right? Just like keeping rent the same, you have to build in these annual Correct. increases. And I know yeah. it's not fun to hear for tenants, like that's not. But with what's happening with yeah. inflation, like you have to do it, otherwise yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with with that, I mean, uh, you know, in five or ten years, I mean, you're sitting really, really, really good. You know, and, yeah. and then in, in in five two years, you save up another five percent, go buy another you know, Absolutely. place, you know, Absolutely. you do that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody in that space, I mean, that's what I'm like, if it's a couple or they have one kid, maybe two kids, yeah. it's like, Hey, if you can start like that, yeah. start like that. Yeah. Because that foundation allows you to build wealth. Yeah. Right. Totally. Like that income, it's just a humongous amount of leverage that yeah. you're walking into, yeah. at, you know, when starting your real estate journey. Um, but yeah, that couple that I was talking about that bought in the garden track, mm -hmm. they had the main house, and then at the back house was like a small, you know, little full blown guest house ADU. Yeah. And they decided to live in the guest house. Oh wow. And to rent yeah. out the main one. Yeah. And it almost clears like their entire That's payment. amazing. You know, and it's been yeah. a lot of work. Like it's been a lot of like managing people, learning, like managing the yeah. drama of like your tenants. Yeah. Yeah. And the, a lot I mean of it's, learning. it's not like yeah. it's not like this is you just walk in and it's easy, no. right? Like yeah. there is a lot of work. That goes into passive income. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ironically That's speaking, so you know, yeah. like there is a ton of work that goes yeah. into passive income. Yeah. If it was easy, everyone would. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. And I just wish it was called something else besides passive because it's the furthest thing from, from passive. passive. Yeah. You've yeah. got to stay up on it. You got to, yeah, if you a bunch of rentals, you oh, can't man. ignore your yeah. repairs or, yeah. So and we've kind of gotten into a little bit more of that. Last few years, we bought um, a triplex, renovated that. Mm. You know, and it we bought it for a crazy good deal because the people who owned it hadn't been keeping up rents. Like we bought it wow. in 2021 and the total rents for all three properties was like twelve hundred dollars a month. For all three? Yeah. It was like so Holy it smokes. was like it might have been twelve to fifteen. It was like right in that range. So like three hundred, four hundred bucks. It's like four hundred to five hundred bucks yeah. a month. And they were like one one bedroom, one bath, you wow. know. And one of them was big enough to like um, convert to a two bedroom, one bath. Wow. So we ended up doing that. And then, you know, we got from like one unit what they were getting for all three, wow. just as an example. So I just think that like sometimes properties just need to be managed well. Yeah. You know, and you have to stay on those yearly increases. Yeah. Otherwise, you put yourself in a position as a landlord where you're not going to be able to take care of the things that are happening to your property or yeah. where you'll just have to sell it at a loss like, you know, yeah. those sellers did at the yep. time. So, yep. Yeah. But, yeah. Wow. Which creates more opportunity. It does. You know, it does. Because not everyone's going to do that, what you just true. said. No, yeah. That's true. Wow. So it's super, super good. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, anyone that's listening, I think the content here is super good for a lot of, um, a yeah. lot of, you know, buyers that want to get into the market. How can they, how can uh, buyers get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, so my number is super easy to remember. Yeah. This is the benefits of working at Verizon is yeah. grabbing a number that was easy to remember. So 351-5555. 5555. Super yeah. easy. It's all fives. So I have you in my phone, yeah. but I don't know your number because <laughs> it's just Daniel Miller. In yeah, there. totally. <laughs> but totally. that's 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 awesome. And then like, cool. you know, social channels are danielmiller.realtor. So yeah. that's where I post like real estate content. Yeah. Um, so, and my website is the same, danielmiller.realtor. So, yeah. Yeah. That's super awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to, we're going to close with a couple more sure. yeah, yeah. questions. So we talked a lot about the, the house hacking. If an investor, if an investor called you and wanted to look at some opportunities yeah. and today yeah. or find some great rentals or potential flips, any good ones out there that you know of right now? Good question. So I kind of keep a running list, like as a every day, like I'm going through the MLS just for myself and mm -hmm. then just to see like what else is, I think it's a good deal. So yeah. I kind of keep a running list. Um, I think I'm trying to think if there's anyone I can think of off the top of my head. I'd have to look at the list, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so I don't remember yeah. exactly, but, um, you know, we did that with, uh, 
some clients that you helped recently. We closed on one on Park oh, Marina. Yeah. yeah. That was so, a, that was a good good little That was a yeah. great one. So that yeah. was like around 360, 370. That was like a house hack. It's exactly a house yeah. hack. And basically what yeah. it had was like an attached ADU in a sense. Mm-hmm. So it was basically like a master suite, but it had its own entrance. Yeah. And so they're going to rent that out separately or live in it and then rent out the rest of the house. Yeah. And then they have plans to renovate a shop in the back into yeah, a full ADU, so which they awesome. cl- they kind of like made sure to check with the city before they got, you know, before they closed yeah. on if that was even a possibility yeah. or not. So scenarios like that are out there. Yeah. I just think you have to be, like we talked about, you have to be ready. Mm-hmm. You have to meet with the lender and know your numbers. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just be looking, like looking harder than I think most people look. Yeah. Like you have to be vigilant. Yeah. 